good evening. We're going to be starting the April 1st council meeting. If you could please rise, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, if you can remain standing, the mayor is going to do the memorials for the month. Good evening, everyone. Our deceased residents for the month of March 2024 Lillian Clark, Margaret Boggs, former Brookhaven Councilwoman Erica Fuchs, Janet Ruth Brown Hyde. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. Roller. We'll have the roll call. Mr. Heller is absent. Mrs. Fulvia, Miss Fulvia, I'm sorry. Present. Uh, Mrs. Heller? Present. Mr. Duplicky? Present. Ms. Sawicki? Present. Mr. Pappas? Here. Mr. Burke? Here. Mayor Leslie? Present. Mr. Wills? Here. Mr. Catania? Here. Mr. Wilworth's here. Mrs. Boyle? Present. Chief Montella? Here. Chief Vice? Here. Roll call complete. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Ford is not here since there was no school today, so we're going to the next item on Zach Justin, the Eagle Scout project. Um, if he wants to come forward, we do need to make a motion to authorize his project. So, Zach, do you want to come up to the podium? That might be easier. Um, Mrs. Heller, did you want to? So, Zach. Um, is going to be explaining one of his projects that he has um, for his Eagle Scout. He's with Troop 605, but I don't want to give away all of his information, so he can do his presentation. But this presentation, thank you, is actually part of the PICO grant that we received last year, which was in the amount of, um, it was a $10,000 match. So part of the funding for that grant is going to go towards Zach's project, and the other part is going towards the uh, Hallie Christine uh, Jackson Sanctuary, um, the Butterfly Sanctuary. So I'm going to let Zach go on and tell us about his project. Uh, how close should I be? Is that on? <laughs> Hold on. It's on. It's on. You good? Okay. This good? So I'm getting a good sign from okay. the back, so you're good. All right. Good evening, Brookhaven Borough Council. Uh, before I go into any detail, I hand you out some brochures that will uh, tell you all about how Eagle Scout projects should be. My name is Zachary Justin, and I am a Life Scout of Boy Scout Troop 605, located at St. John's Christison. I myself is a, am a Brookhaven resident, so when it came time for me to pick my Eagle Scout project, I knew I wanted to do something that would benefit my hometown. In order for this process to begin, I reached out to Brookhaven Borough Office and was given the names of Mr. and Mrs. Heller. Before, oh, <clears throat> my bad. <laughs> I emailed the Hellers asking for ideas in Brookhaven for an Eagle Scout project. Mrs. Heller provided me with a list of few, a few ideas that the council currently had at the time. One of the projects that stood out to me was the one on the Arlington property, which happened to be at the end of my street. So we scheduled a meeting to go over what they wanted there, and I met with the Hellers as well as the Public Works employee. The main goal is ultimately desired is a walkthrough path from the corner of Edwards and Arlington down to Brookhaven Road. Currently, Brookhaven owns the upper portion of that land while the portion down near Brookhaven is still privately owned. The Hellers and I discussed what could be done on the upper portion of this land, and I plan to install two large benches, just like the ones out front of this building, and the benches will be anchored down onto two large concrete pads that will need to be installed. Uh, let's see, if you look here, there's um, the padding there. Those are not the benches that I'll be using, but the the pads themselves will be similar. Uh, the benches, yeah. These benches will be on both sides of the upper path about 20 feet apart. If you look around here, right where you see the, uh, right by this tree will be one bench and then over here 
by this house. There's not very, I can't really circle it or anything. We'll be, just picture it on the other side, there will be another bench there on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. uh, these will be the benches that I'll be installing. And along with these two benches, there will be a, uh, two red maple trees that I plan to plant in the area on the specifically asked by Mr. Heldon. Uh, my hope is that this will be a nice resting place for, my, for people to walk through the area on hot days or long walks. This project will require assistance from the public works team along with the management of the project, <clears throat> with my management of the project and the assistance of other scouts in my troop. I do not have a set date yet on which we plan to start as I still have to get the project signed off by the Minquist District Eagle Scout Project Coordinator. Once that is done, we hope to get it finished as soon as possible before it gets too hot this summer. I asked the Brookhaven Council to approve this project to allow me to do something that will benefit our hometown for years to come. Thank you very much. Mrs. Heller, do we need a motion yes. to offer? I would like to make a motion to accept Zach's proposal for his uh, Eagle Scout project for the Arlington um, area. Okay, do we have a second? I'll make the second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> we are ready for um, the first public discussion. If you do come up, can you please print your name on the paper that Mrs. Boyle has so she can read it for the minutes. Anybody who wants to, um, uh, Mr. Leslie. Okay. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Charles Leslie, 703 Cambridge Road. I received this letter in the mail. I guess I'm part of some scam or something that's going on. I just want to bring it to the council's attention and the public's attention that uh, some company in North Carolina has picked me out, putting stuff in the trash, and they're going to fine me $100 a day <laughs> if I don't get it cleaned up. I did bring it to the chief's attention the other day. He was aware of it, so I'm just bringing it to the, the public's attention if anybody else is in some uh, trash scam. So I did call the number, nobody answered. In case our elderly get this from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that I have the traffic light out here, Edgemont and Coburn and Cambridge. Yes. Seven minutes and 42 seconds the other day at 3.30 in the morning going to work. Uh -huh. I, somebody said there was a problem with the shadow, the sun and everything. Not at 3.30 in the morning there wasn't. That needs to be addressed, I believe. And then coming the other way on Coburn, one car comes through and it's back to red. Uh -huh. You got to get that fixed. Seven minutes and 42 seconds at 3.30 in the morning of the day going to work. Were you, John's late? John's you. Were you late? This intersection right here. Were you I'm late, not, uh, No, I'm not late. late. I'm about two hours before I go to work. <laughs> anyway, somebody could be late for work. And every, if anybody's traveled there, they know that it's yeah, we like know. a pain in the neck over here. You've got to get it fixed. Charles, what's the intersection? John's right good. Edgemont and uh, Coburn. Edgemont, Edgemont and Coburn. Uh, Cambridge. 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 Going out. And then coming the other way from Coburn, it's one car comes through. We all know that. We've been through it. I know. Just bringing that to the attention of the council. Yeah, Thank John, you. John will call tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else for public discussion? Hi, Lynn Delgott. Do I need to tell you my address? Yes. 4501 school. Um, I just have one question. Um, and I'm really glad that someone's taping. Does this mean that um, the, the meetings will be uh, posted? Yes. Yes, they're on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, they are. Um, I've had some trouble catching up with the meetings that I was not, you know, that I haven't um, been able to attend. But um, is there any reason why uh, we can't um, live stream? Has that been discussed at all? I believe that it has been looked at. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head what the reasoning was for the live stream aspect. 
Um, so this was one of the, I guess, um, options that was available at the time. But we can always revisit the live streaming if necessary. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, if it's a, if it's a financial issue, I think that, um, I mean, I don't know how much it would cost to have that. I honestly yeah. don't. Um, but if it's a financial issue, I think it's something that, um, I know the I know the residents that I speak with would be willing to um, you know have that put in the budget because it's you know it's not always easy to get here um, and if you're traveling you could at least keep up with what's going on. We have a technology and communications meeting on Thursday, so we will definitely bring it up and see what is possible for the live stream because I don't think you're the only person that's requested and I I do know that we um, researched it back during COVID when I was doing Zoom, but I don't recall off the top of my head what was the reason that we could not uh, physically live stream. Yeah. But we'll bring it up. Back in the day, I used to, when I worked in Pendelco, we used to do some stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, being in the technology department, I would help do that. And it's not new technology. So, no, no. You know? yeah. yep. um, all right, thanks. You're very welcome. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is John Pasilio. I'm a resident at 4926 Grant Drive. Uh, I'm just following up uh, with what Mr. Leslie said about the, um, on the other side of Coburn and Edgemont, the traffic light there. I drive up there every morning. Um, usually, if I'm not, if I come up short of the line or just at the line, I have to sit at least through two cycles before before the light will change on my end. And it, it, like he said, it takes like maybe 10 minutes added to the commute and there's maybe no traffic coming on either sides, but like if there's no traffic on either sides, it's still not signaling and it's frustrating. So if we could get someone to please look at that, appreciate it. John's gonna call tomorrow and hopefully somebody will be coming out tomorrow or the next day. Thank you. Check the entire <laughs> John, include me please. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. That's the end of um, the first public discussion. The next person is um, Police Chief Vice. Would you please come to the podium? Thank you. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. Good evening. Um, just before I start, as far as the signal, we are aware that it, it does seem to be somewhat of an intermittent problem. Um, I've been told there's something with the glare, there's something with vehicles not tripping the light. Um, hopefully signal service can get it fixed this time. I am aware it's a problem. We've tried to address it. We've tried doing everything we can. We call them. Um, I think part of the issue is that it is somewhat intermittent. So hopefully they'll be able to, knowing that information, hopefully they can troubleshoot and try to get this fixed once so. and for all. Can I just interrupt for really quickly. Does this interfere when there is like a fire event where if there, yeah, the light automatically? The oftentimes work for fire. Yeah, okay. Right. Thank you. So just so you know, I am aware of that. So, all right. For the month of, month of March, uh, the Brookhaven Borough Police Department initiated or were assigned a total of 814 assignments through Delcom. Some of the noteworthy incidents were we had nine thefts, we had two vehicle thefts, one in which uh, there was an arrest made uh, with that. One, there are circumstances, it is technically a vehicle theft, but I think that's gonna be resolved where it's actually not gonna be a theft. I think somebody is reporting something that may not be exactly correct. We also had one attempt theft of vehicle. We had two simple assault, one vandalism, two fraud. We had nine DUIs, two were controlled substances, and seven were alcohol related. We had four public drunkenness, one disorderly conduct, six narcotics investigations, eight animal complaints, one curfew violation, one solicitor complaint, 26 suspicious conditions, two harassment complaints, 21 disturbances or domestic disputes, 55 medical assists, 31 assist other departments, 12 alarms, 20 vehicle crashes, and 30 hazardous conditions or assist motorists. For the month, we had 36 adults arrested, three juveniles, which were related to the vehicle theft. Um, <coughs> citations issued, there were 201. Parking violations, there were 27. And warnings issued, there were 206. Um, I'm gonna bring, I just received an email this evening that I, I'm gonna address. 
because I think it's an issue that obviously people are concerned with. I'll read you the email. It says, Dear Chief Vice, I'm sending this email because I'm not sure if I will be able to make it to the council meeting tonight and question you directly due to my work schedule. So I have a question pertaining to an issue that came to my attention after your Brookhaven Council President was pulled over by your Brookhaven police officer. I understand you supposedly have a hit list on certain people. I am supposedly on it, which I have no idea why I would even be on it, although I have my own suspicions, but I will keep it to myself. So one, do you have a hit list? And if so, I would like to know why I would even be on it. I heard of others, but I'm only asking for myself. Can you please explain if you know anything about this hit list? I know I'm not a Brookhaven resident, and you don't have to answer my question, but how do you think that would look? People thinking you have a hit list out on them, and you do not want to reply to them, especially all the bad publicity you were just getting last month. And it's signed Kim Roman, Parkside resident. My response to that is very brief. As a result of this email, I want to make it emphatically clear that I do not have any hit lists. Our officers do not have any hit lists. And in the time I have been chief, there never were any hit lists. I have done an exhaustive search in our record management system, and there are no contacts with Ms. Roman for traffic stops. There are no contacts with her vehicle ever being stopped by Brookhaven Borough Police Department. I feel that this has all, all only come about as a result of a traffic stop involving Mr. Hell. There was never a mention of any of this before that. His public statements continue to do damage to our police department, and this is yet again another example. More lies and untrue statements being spread. That's the end of my report. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Chief Montella, your report, sir. Evening, Chief. Good evening, Council, residents, guests. For Cave and Fire Company's March 2024 fire report, we had two fire incidents in the borough, 19 non-fire, 34 calls for mutual aid, four drill sessions, total of 59 calls for the fire department for the month, 161 for the year. We had a $40,000 loss on contents in the borough. We had $800,000 of property endangered in the borough this month. For the year, we've had $1,300,000 of property endangered in the borough. No firefighter injuries for the month. Our manpower was 59 calls, average of 10 firefighters responding per call. We're in service for 320 hours, 729 hours for the year. Our fire training was four drills, average 24 firefighters, 156 hours of training for the month, 344 for the year. Incidents we responded to in Brookhaven Borough, one CO called 532 West Brookhaven Road at the Stonehill Port Apartments and the Building B, contractor in the basement uh, condo unit running a gas saw inside the building, filled the building up with uh, carbon monoxide. So the residents upstairs with the CO detectors in their condos actually probably saved some lives. Three motor vehicle accidents in the borough with injuries, 5075 Edgemont Avenue, 3500 block of Edgemont Avenue, and we had another one at Edgemont Avenue and Cambridge Road. We had a unique call the other day, a wires transformer call where half the borough was knocked out of power during the day. Um, the call was in front of 4505 Chandler Drive. Residents at 4505 Chandler Drive and 4500 Chandler Drive lost multiple appliances in their homes due to this PICO failure. One resident lost every appliance in his house, and um, the other resident lost his heater, his air conditioning, and some, his all his cable TV was uh, burned up. And uh, as a result of that, the residents were advised to um, have a claim open with uh, PICO's claim unit and advised to notify their insurance companies. That was a little different. <coughs> An odd call that caused a lot of damage. Assisted the Chester Fire Department covering the city of Chester while they operated on a water rescue involving a small child that fell into the Chester Creek. 
Um, while they were on their rescue mission to find this child, um, our fire company responded down there with an engine. We covered calls in the city of Chester while they were out looking for this small child all night. We assisted Middletown Fire Company on a building fire at 464 South Old Middletown Road. Assisted Aston Township on two building fires, one at 2157 Lee Lane, one at 8 Green Lane. Assisted Chester Township on two building fires, 20 McDonald Boulevard and 1320 Powell Road. And we assisted Upland Fire Company on a building fire at 4 3rd Street. Our fire tra training involved uh, our annual SCBA recertification training. We will do a live burn this Sunday at the Westchester Burn Tower to get all our guys recertified in air packs. We, had, we also did a class on, we had an instructor come in for a class on mental health awareness for first responders. Just make us aware of things that we take home with us every day to our families. <coughs> and also we had a forcible entry drill with our forcible entry door. Under our grant awards with our Safer Grant, I spoke at the last meeting that um, we are in an active recruitment campaign for the next four years to try to find some volunteer firefighters within our community. We have a brochure that will come to everybody's homes, hopefully within the next week or two. It's a nice flyer. It tells us a little bit about us, what we do every day, day in and day out. Also, if you ever have interest to come to the fire company, come up and see what we're all about. Our doors are always, always open, but we actively do years, especially young guys from 18 to 30 years old. We can really use some people. We'll get you trained, we'll get you geared up, we'll get you whole nine yards, we'll get you a firefighter physical, we'll get you set up. But our, our campaign is four years, we got $437,000 from the federal government to spend on this, and we have a marketing firm trying to sell us to everybody. So we're doing a good job. And look for us on our new website at let me see, I got it written down here because I'm used to our old one. Join Brookhaven and Fire Org. So that's our new website. If you want to put an application in, you can put down time you're available. We can schedule an interview, that kind of things. But we're really trying to find some people to come into the fire service. And our upcoming fundraisers for the fire fire department that we're having we're having a Chick Fil A night this Wednesday, April 3rd, from four to seven at Chick Fil A over there. It's probably going to be pouring rain, but. We'll still be out there, so you get a chance to get a Chick-fil-A sandwich, grab one, and they do some proceeds towards us for it. And we're having a big coach bag bingo on Mother's Day weekend on Friday, May 10th at 6 o'clock here at the Borough Hall. So anybody who wants to do that and win yourself a nice handbag, sign up. If you just want to come up and have a good time, sign up too. Our uh, EMS report for March 2024. The ambulance answered 250 calls for service in the month of, month of March, transported 162 people to the hospital, 176 of those calls were ALS, 74 were BLS, and we had 75 local alarms, 175 mutual aids, and the ambulance has responded to 790 calls so far this year. So it's a little busy. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Leslie, do you have your report? Thank you. I just have one thing. I know the weather's getting uh, nice out, and the solicit people will be around soliciting. Can we confirm that we only have right now a permit for Mr. Softy? Is that correct, John? Say that again. I'm sorry. Mr. Softy. The permits. The only one we have out right now is for Mr. Softy. Correct. That's correct. Okay. So if people come to your door and you feel like they're a nuisance and everything, you can always call 911 and send an officer out and they will escort them out of our borough. End of my report. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Wills, your report, sir. Yes, thank you, Madam President Pro Tem, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A copy of the solicitor's report is on file with the borough secretary's office in the event any members of the public would like to review it. I have one action item for Burr Council's consideration this evening. It, of course, concerns the consolidated collective bargaining agreement with Lodge Number 27 of the Fraternal Order of Police of Delaware County. And basically, the consolidated CBA incorporates the terms of the 2020 through 2024 collective bargaining agreement 
as well as the memorandum of understanding regarding the sergeant's position into the prior 2017 to 2020 collective bargaining agreement. Uh, this particular agreement has been reviewed ad nauseum by both myself and the solicitor for the Fraternal Order of Police, and it is now ready to be adopted. And so if it is the pleasure of Borough Council, a motion would be in order to adopt that agreement. So moved. We have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carried. <coughs> okay, thank you. And I remind Borough Council that beginning on or about July the 1st of 2024, we will begin negotiations with Fraternal Order of Police in the hopes of achieving a new collective bargaining agreement that would become effective on or about January the 1st of 2025. Second item on my agenda concerns, again, the Our Lady of Charity uh, uh, School Property Acquisition Project. Uh, again, I have uh, uh, forwarded a formal proposal uh, to the attorney for the Archdiocese. We are waiting uh, to receive a formal response. I have followed up with a couple emails to the attorney last week, again, and I'm hoping to hear something in the near future. Third item on my agenda concerns, of course, the lease agreement, again, that we have with the County of Delaware concerning the Brookhaven District Court. Again, I had forwarded back in January new formal proposals to achieve a new lease agreement with the County of Delaware that would include a 10-year lease renewal program. Again, we are waiting to hear from the uh, people at uh, Delaware County Courthouse, specifically the President Judge, uh, as well as County Council on that arrangement. So I hope to hear something as well in the near future on that issue. Third item on my agenda again <coughs> concerns delinquent sewer and trash fee accounts. As I have corresponded and communicated with Borough Council, last month my office drafted and filed in the Delaware County Court of Common Pleas 50 sewer fee municipal liens and 33 trash fee liens, again, for those property owners who have not fulfilled their obligations to uh, the borough. And again, those liens have been filed pursuant to the various municipal ordinances that we have on the books. Next item on my agenda concerns right to no law request. Again, I continue to work diligently with our open records officer and our borough secretary as we continue to move forward and move through the various right to no law requests. Uh, some are quite cumbersome and very involved and Again, I'll continue to work with the borough secretary and the open records officer as we comply with those various document requests. And finally, I would bring to council's attention as well as the public's, I had the opportunity and the pleasure to know quite well former Brookhaven councilwoman Erica Fuchs, who passed away recently. I worked diligently with Ms. Fuchs in the Delaware County Boroughs Association as well as the Pennsylvania Boroughs Association. She was a remarkable woman, high energy, had impeccable integrity, had a vast knowledge of municipal law and a deep commitment to public service. She will be missed. She will be. She will be missed. And with that, Madam President, I can report general Progress. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Wills. Uh, Mr. Catania, did you have a report tonight? Yes, thank you. The report is on file for anyone who wants to look at it. Uh, a couple items to discuss is the uh, 2020 store street, 2024 street resurfacing. The contract with the borough and AF Damon Company have been executed. I should have a schedule from Damon at, at next month's meeting when he plans to start. Uh, at the sewage treatment plant each year, the boroughs are responsible or required to submit a report to DEP on the plant for the previous year. That report was filed as of March 31st to meet the, the deadline. The two action items that are on the agenda for this evening is first, the gym floor refinishing. We have awarded a contract through CoStars to Miller Sports Flooring 
in the amount of $25,250. So do we need a motion for that? Do we have a motion? Please. Do we hear a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, it is awarded to Miller Sports Flooring. And that is to co-star, so that does not require a formal bidding process. That's correct. Next is the Charles Avenue Sanitary Sewer Project. As you're aware, the borough received a grant for the replacement of the sanitary sewer on Charles Avenue. Right. If asked for authorization to advertise for bids. So we do need a motion to advertise for bids for Charles Avenue Sanitary Sewer Project. Do we hear a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. <coughs> Any opposed? Okay. It is approved. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. C okay. Mr. Catania? Okay. Um, I guess we're at nine. Oh, we're going to do this. I don't really. Okay, motion to approve the March 4th meeting minutes. Right? Okay, so we need a motion? Yep, March 4th. March 4th. Yep. I'll make the motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Hearing none. They're approved. And there is a motion to waive the permit fees for Delco the movie for filming scenes at the Borough Hall. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. I actually have a question about that, if I may. Um, is what, I, I mean, because I'm new, what, why are we waiving this fee? Is this something that we normally do? Or, We've never I mean, done it before. We've never, done, we've never had the movie people here. Okay. It's our first movie here. So this is our first movie. So, so we want to make sure that we're giving them the good Brookhaven welcome. Then. Okay. For those who don't know, Delaware County is the Hollywood of the East. Because it's, <laughs> oh, that's, I'm serious. Sun, go look at Sun Center. What's been, it's a movie production. They're mm -hmm. making movies, television shows, and... They're, they were in the Ridley Township um, Prospect Park area two weeks ago making a movie for a TV show. So, I mean, I, it's all over the place. Okay. Um, we might as well get in on it while we can. Sure. I think all right. Well, uh, but you, I mean, you made the motion. I'll second the motion. Yes. We have it. Maybe I think we should. for extras, too. For yeah, they, oh, my goodness. So Non-speaking roles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, then you can't apply them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're looking for lawyers. <laughs> okay, so the main thing is you're going to waive the permit fee. Oh, do you, do you know what the permit fee was, John? No. No, I didn't hear it either. Well, I guess for the first time we should waive it. And then we're going to negotiate if they, they have made, they have talked to us last year and nothing, nothing came of it. So we're really hoping put Brookhaven on the map. I would think so. So we're going to make a motion to waive the permit fee. Anybody want to make that motion? We did. I think I'm we did, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Now, I'm back to my report. Okay, I have um, a motion to approve the bill list. Um, and what I'm going to do for the bill list for April, I'm going to go through the, the list. General fund is $158,098.33. Trash fund is $4,671.59. Sewer fund is $328,967.12. Road fund is $2,602.30. For grand total of $494,339.34 for the month of April. So I'm going to make the motion so we can have that approved tonight. Need a yeah. second. Do we need a second? You do. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So we'll pay the bills this month. Delilah will be happy. Uh, we are going to make a motion to advertise for the position of borough, borough treasurer because um, Delilah will be leaving later in the year. So we, um, we do need to put an ad in the paper. So I am going to make um, who wants to make the motion to advertise. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we, John will put the ad in the paper for us. That's all I have under my report. Um, Nora, did you want to do your report? Oh, Thank yeah, you. sure. 
Um, and before, before I get into my report, um, I just wanted to make a, a brief statement um, because I, I didn't at the last meeting. Um, but I, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, offer my support to the police department. Um, I think that, you know, you put your lives on the line for us every day, and I think it's very important that you feel supported by council. Um, and, and also, I think that even though I'm, I'm still relatively new here, um, one of the most important things we can have as elected officials is the trust of the people we represent. And I think that uh, that has been severely damaged over the last month. Um, and you know, I, I think we need your trust that we are going to act in the best interest of Brookhaven and that we're going to act with integrity and, account and accountability. Um, so my, my pledge to Brookhaven is that I will do everything that I can in the coming weeks and months to help restore that trust in your council and your police department and also help to, um, to restore a more productive working uh, relationship between the council and the police department going forward. Um, so thank you. Um, And then on to uh, my, my update um, about the Sustainability Committee. I, I do apologize. I told you all that I would have a, a date for our first meeting uh, that I would announce tonight, um, but I don't have that. Uh, I do have about six people, six or seven people who have expressed interest in joining the committee. So what I'd like to do is actually, um, I'm gonna send an email um, out to all of you and uh, take a poll to see what, uh, what dates uh, would work for you because I wanna make sure that everyone uh, who wants to be included can be included. Um, and then at that point, uh, we'll settle on a date and, uh, and get started with that. Um, in the meantime, I have also started to work on getting uh, quotes for the municipal center um, for solar panels for the municipal center. Um, and John is gonna be doing the bulk of that work um, <laughs> once I put him in, in touch with uh, the, the companies I'm contacting. Let me um, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, the first step will just be to uh, to see if it's even feasible. Um, you know, to see if it's feasible for the the structure of the roof and everything, um, and then to to look at costs. And um, the the idea would be that if if it is feasible and the costs are reasonable, um, and should council be amenable to it. We would then look for uh, grants to to fund it, um, and that is it for my update today. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Howard. Do you have a report? I do. Thank you. A uh, family day meeting was held on Thursday, March 28th at 6 p.m. It was our very first one for the upcoming family day um, for 2024. It was very productive. We already have the shirt designs, the theme some cost-saving ideas on the food, and tweets of characters that will be walking around. Um, so it was a very productive meeting. The next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, April 25th at 6 p.m. I met with the, the CEO, Justin Stouch, of Stouch Lighting on Thursday, March 28th at 7 p.m. to discuss the adjustment of the field lights at Memorial and Sampson Parks. The lights are up, they're operational. We just need to adjust them, um, which will require a lift and some extremely dry weather which hopefully will come sometime very soon. Um, baseball will have their light ceremony um, at Memorial Park on Friday, April 5th at, 2000, uh, at 6 p.m. Um, they will have the senator, the state rep, um, uh, there for a, a, a game. We also have softball will be hosting their ceremony at Sampson Park, I believe preliminary on uh, Friday, May 17th, and it's going to be alum game, so more on that when we get closer to the date. Um, opening day for baseball and softball is scheduled this Saturday on April 6th. The parade will begin at 9 a.m. at Faith Community Church, so come on out and enjoy the parade and uh, cheer on our, our uh, athletes for the upcoming season. 
I want to thank Chief Vice, Chief Montella, Dave Evans, John Woolworth, and Steve Schultz for their response and diligence for the power outage that was affected that the, uh, Chief Montella mentioned earlier. Um, it affected Barrow Hall, and we identified some critical issues that have to be addressed. Um, so thank you, Mr. Woolworth, for your diligence with that today. Um, and also, I want to thank all those involved with the storm that occurred on Saturday, uh, March 23rd, uh, which was a real uh, hoot for everyone. Um, the parade committee is scheduled to meet this month. It states on the calendar that it's going to be April 10th, but it may be the following, following week, possibly the following week, which will be the 17th, but we will um, put information out, or Linda will put information out on that. Uh, the Technology and Communications Committee is going to be meeting on Thursday, um, April 11th, which I mentioned earlier, and we will make sure that we discuss the, the live streaming that was mentioned by Lynn um, earlier. Um, for the Rec Board, Rec Board did meet on Thursday the 28th at 7 p.m. Um, some of the events that are upcoming are we have our Spring Fling Dance this Friday um, at 6, Tom, 7, 7 o'clock. Um, and I'm sure Tom's going to come up and correct anything that I missed. Um, but the spring fling dance is at 7 o'clock in our gym for the 5th and 6th graders for all the Delaware um, Delco, not Delco, um, Penn Delco School District, the Christian Academy, and as well as Holy Family for 5th and 6th graders. Uh, Friday, April 12th is our murder mystery dinner, uh, the murder in Tinseltown. You can still have tickets, purchase tickets. They are $50 for... $55 a person and $50 for a couple. On Saturday, April 13th, will be another HIT class, your high intense interval of training at 9 a.m. in the gym. The class is $5. On Sunday, April 14th, is Artful Aging. Um, the craft is going to be a flower of some sort made with fabric from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. I want to wish happy birthday to Detective Wetton and happy birthday to Sergeant Eastman that will be coming up between now and the next um, council meeting workshop. So I do have a few comments that I would like to make on myself and on behalf of my husband. So obviously the incident that occurred back on March 8th, there's a lot of opinions that are on Facebook. Um, I don't do in, with well with opinions, I do with facts. Um, so for me, Facebook is nothing but, uh, unfortunately, fake accounts with fake people that have nothing really important to say because they don't have much time. If you are that bored, we have plenty of uh, committees that need volunteers. So some of the facts that I'm going to give you tonight are some actual things that have occurred. So those that know me, that claim that they know my husband on Facebook, they don't know him. I have been almost married to my husband for 25 years come July, and we've been together for 32 years come July, or together for 25, 32 years. So in the last six years, I have watched my husband on council. The first two years, I was not on council, but I came to every council meeting and every council workshop, sat in the back, and took notes to assist him and to support him. Um, when I came on council in 2020, um, with the current council and with the previous council, um, a lot of the programs that we have in place would not have been successful without the implementation of Mr. Heller. So some of those programs are our Hometown Hero Banner program, which he started two years prior to me coming on council, where he met with over all of the participants. We came up here, we took pictures of the banners and had the families talk to us about all of their um, loved ones that had served. Um, so that program would not have been initiated without Terry and obviously um, Councilman Burke over there on the committee. He also started the sanctuary for the Hallie Christine Jackson um, Butterfly Sanctuary. And for those that do not know who that is or what that is involving, is actually um, something to deal with mental health and suicide awareness where we took a retention pond and made it something into a beautiful sanctuary honoring um, Hallie Jackson, um, working with her family that came very close to Chief Vice and the police department as well, and they have the No Shave November, and all that money does go towards the Hallie Christine Jackson. The recording started because of Mr. Heller. We also had uh, a lot of 
businesses and business owners that Mr. Heller has reached out to bring them to uh, Brookhaven to make us and put us on the map. <coughs> we had him actually many times went out and actually went to a, a resident's house to remove a dead rat. He also removed, um, went to <coughs> find a snake that was in a, a resident's house. These are all things that he did not need to do, but he did and he went above and beyond. And, and many of you may not know of the crisis that we had back in the summer of 2022 with our ALS service. Um, and for those that don't know that back in the summer of 2022, um, Crozier at the time, who went from a nonprofit to a profit, were going to remove our advanced life safety chase car, which meant our paramedic was going to go away, which again would mean that life people would die. So working with the fire department, the fire board, working with our senators and our state reps um, and with our county council, we met and they wanted to charge us in mid-cycle for the budget $150,000 to continue this service, which meant that they put a, a value on human life. During that time, we had meetings, we weren't getting anywhere, they weren't going to budge, but Mr. Heller went and spoke with actually the senator and with the county council and was able to come up with the money to actually pay for that service. In the end, Crozier decided that they were going to keep their contract with us and Mr. Heller went and was able to retrieve $100,000 from the senator's office so that we were able to pay our EMS healthcare benefits. So these are just a snapshot of some of the things. Um, he also, also when Officer Orabi Youssef went into the water to rescue that young boy, um, we, he initiated time off for the officer so that he can take care of himself physically and mentally. So for those that don't know Terry, he is very dedicated to this community. He's dedicated to the police. He does support the police. And for me to be up here, we do support the police. Council, the mayor, always will have our back. One of the things uh, you know, Nora mentioned about the trust, um, and one of the comments that was made last week was that the trust is gone. Well, I don't believe that the trust is gone. I believe that it just needs to be worked on just like any other relationship that is on there. We have 8,500 individuals that we report to. That's how many the police and how many the fire department have as well. You all are our bosses. We need to, if something is being reported to us, we need to act in the best interest of 8,500 people. And that is our job. We may not like it. We may have difference of opinions. But at all times, we need to have mutual respect. And we do have respect for the police. We have respect for our residents. And that we will work diligently to rebuild that trust as Nora stated. Um, so that is the end of my report. Thank you, Madam. And we do have um, Mr. Pappas. Oh, thank you, Jan. Thank you. <clears throat> the workplace safety I attended a workplace safety meeting um, which uh, an audit was completed by the insurance carrier. Uh, the, the audit is a routine procedure regarding policies and procedures and we're well within the guidelines uh, of um, those procedures. Mm -hmm. uh, during the course, uh, no borough vehicles were uh, involved in any type of accidents. Uh, no borough employees were listed as being injured and we still have one public works uh, employee out on a workman's comp injury. Mm -hmm. uh, I attended a historical committee meeting uh, the committee continues to acquire historical information on residents and have completed the effects uh, and with the, the effects of uh, Mimi and McGovern and John Colton have uh, opened up a topic of uh, the servicemen within our community that were killed in action. Uh, these uh, four men are listed in our showcase right outside here in the borough hall. If you have an opportunity, just take a glance at it. It's just a brief view of the service that they were in and uh, where they lived here in Brookhaven with their snapshots uh, along the way there. That's my report. Thank you. <coughs> and we do have uh, Mr. Burke. Thank you, Madam uh, President Pro Tem. So the um, Ordinance Committee did not meet last month uh, as we were planning on doing because 
there was an emergency unscheduled executive session of council that was called. Uh, the members were uh, emailed a copy of Ordinance 827, which is the Responsible Contractor Ordinance, to review for our next meeting, which is uh, Thursday, April 18th at 6.30. Um, <clears throat> I gave some comments last meeting last week about support for our police department as well as fire and EMS. I stand by those words. Um, I don't think anybody in here who's been a resident for a very long time would doubt anything that Mrs. Heller is saying about Mr. Heller. He has done a lot of good for this borough. There's no doubt about it. He's come up with a lot of great ideas. But what I think we'd all like to hear is an apology. And I don't think we've gotten that so far. And it's unfortunate that he's not here to give his side of the story, but that's, that's how I feel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. DePlicky, do you have a report? Yes, I do. Thank you, President Pro Tem Uh I want to start with, uh, on Saturday, this coming Saturday from 9 to noon, uh, Brookhaven will be hosting a shredding event at Coburn Elementary. Uh, this will include paper products. Just be mindful not to have, you know, metal bindings or clip paper clips or anything. Just, you know, any kind of paper product. As well with anything with electrical cords, uh, TVs, computer equipment, uh, electronics. And I, I'm even thinking it's uh, uh, appliances as well. So please, if you want to make it over there, to, you know, we have, we'll have it all set up for you. And we'll take everything you need to get rid of. Just be also be mindful, this is coinciding with the opening day parades for baseball as well as softball. <laughs> Their parade will start along Edgemont Avenue. From what I understand, not all lanes will be shut on Edgemont, but might be mindful of traffic restrictions and maybe little detours in the area. I would like to think the parade route will be off of Edgemont by around 10-ish. So uh, at that point, uh, you should be, have free access to get down Coburn Boulevard. But ahead of 10 o'clock, I think you might have to detour around in the back roads and the neighborhoods to make it into the uh, recycling event. Also, at this time, I want to have a motion to hire a new seasonal employee. His name is Mason Esner at the rate of $17.51 an hour to work public works. Again, this is a seasonal employee. So can I get a motion? I want to make the motion to hire Mr. Esner at $17.51. Can you have a second? Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. okay. Thank all you. In, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, he is hired. All right. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Did you have anything else? Um, yeah, I also wanted to say for the storm the other day or over the weekend on Saturday, <laughs> uh, fortunately, we did not get any kind of serious concerning situations. So we got through that storm pretty well. Public Works didn't have to, you know, really go at it really hard to. I'm sure they were out and about cleaning drains and whatnot, but nothing serious occurred. So again, uh, we made it through that storm quite well. And my last comment, uh, I, at the workshop meeting last week, uh, Solicitor Wills made his statement, and I fully stand behind the statement he made on behalf of council. We do want to work well and productively with the police department. Uh, I, for one, I want, I've never had anything negative really to say about the police department. Uh, but I stand behind the statement of Mr. Wills, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get through this situation and uh, work well together with the police department once again. <clears throat> thank you. Great, thank you. Now we do have some inspector reports. Mr. Polo. Evening, sir. Everyone. Um, I will not bore you with my usual numbers. I want to talk about a couple properties. I've got numerous complaints, 700 block of Marshall. Um, I'm well aware of the house. I'm working with the owner to get it cleaned up, but it's going to take time. Uh, the other thing, I finally got a hold of the owners of the old flower shop. I'm going to work with them. Hopefully by June, we'll have the greenhouse torn down. So that's a work in progress. Uh, the other thing I'll say now that it's spring and it's raining, Remember to cut your grass. Uh, it's for businesses and homeowners. And do not put your grass 
in the street, okay, that is actually illegal. All right? Thank you. Thank you. I can add to the grass clippings. Uh, you're allowed through the trash company arrangement to have up to three bags of yard waste, leaves, uh, you know, general stuff, grass clippings, leaves, don't put sticks out there in the street either. If you have clip tree clippings to get rid of, you know, call the you know, office here in Public Works can make arrangements to make it time to uh, get the shredder out to your property and get rid of those, okay? Mr. Um, Leslie, did you have a... This is your one. Did you have a further report? <clears throat> Thank you. Took care of this month as the fire marshal. Uh, so the CO inspections are ongoing. We uh, covered uh, 3432 Edgemont Avenue. That's the old Frank and Frank Giovanni's, the Brutti Pizza, Changed Hand, Femi's Pizza, Swiss Farms, mm -hmm. Sandra's Daycare, and we still have a couple pending out there. I want to thank Mr. Catania and his office. We finally got addresses for Scott Park, 900 Marshall. Uh, Dirk and Field's going to be 200 Coburn. Eaton Park's going to be 20 West Maple. And Sampson Park is going to be 3431 Nathan. Thank you, Mr. Catania, on that. Uh, again, spring cleanup for your properties, people. Uh, your basement, your garages, sheds, attics, so forth. Uh, hazardous materials cannot go into the trash, the waste. Look on the Delco website, they get on there, they'll tell you where to bring it. There's different spots throughout the county. You can take that paint thinners, mineral spirits, et cetera. Remember, no flammables in your attached garages. Old fire extinguishers, don't bring them to the firehouse. We don't take them. Okay. Lowe's will take them, I believe, and they also take the old light bulbs and stuff like that. Uh, hoarding conditions in your house, clean it up, get rid of it. You haven't touched it in three years, get rid of it. Uh, Summit Pharmacy's coming along down there. Be careful on that shopping center. They have new islands in there, and you can run into them, okay? <laughs> Somebody's already run into them. I see they're laughing out there, so be careful. Ross Renovations, that's ongoing. That's coming along really good. And I didn't really hear your report, Mrs. Holler, about the key fobs in the bar here when the power went out. Did, that, did you mention that? No, but I believe that the chief and I believe John were working on that to rectify the issue. Okay, so the fire department can get everyone to but uh, the <coughs> fire alarm goes off, some kind of battery backup on that key fob system so we don't have to damage anything. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the fire department would find some way to get in here if they Oh, have we'll, get, okay. we'll, we'll get in, but okay. we don't want to damage anything. But That's yeah, why we have the box box coordinates in the fire route. We did find some flaws that we need to correct, and I'm working on that right now. So Thank I'm assuming you. that it fails safe and uh, fails secure than not fails safe. Yes. Okay. Thank we you. We need to be addressed. That's the end of my report. Thank you. And I meant that as a compliment, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I any other inspector? I don't think they missed anybody Good. else. Okay, now there's a second public discussion period. If you want to come to the podium and um, put your name, print your name for Mrs. Boyle. Mr. Tom. Who is this person? I don't, we don't know. Tom Dykes for Cavan Road. Uh, for Rec Board. Okay, so we. Sherry did announce okay. dances this Friday for fifth and sixth graders. Okay, no. All of Pendalco, including Christian Academy and Holy Family. Uh, it's $10 to get in. The, the kids get a slice of pizza and two drinks for that price. The parade is Saturday at 9 o'clock for softball and baseball. It starts at Faith Community Church, comes down to Edgemont Avenue. The girls shoot off at Trimble and go over that way. The boys continue down to Cambridge Road. So you know, uh, with the recycling, I was checking some other things today on other rec boards around and things are going on. Uh, does anyone know how lucky we are in Brookhaven to be able to take electronics to our recycling? Yes. Do you know how lucky we are? Yes. Okay. Five, five, minutes, five minutes up the road, okay, up the road, they're having a recycling day the same day. Televisions are $30. Oh, yeah. Okay. Think about that. We do it for free. So, thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for bringing up that time. Thank you very much. Uh, Murder Mystery is Friday, March, April the 12th. It's at 7 o'clock. Doors open at 6.30. It is a catered buffet dinner. Uh, tickets are still available until Sunday, uh, April the 7th. They have to turn the number into the caterer on the 8th. Uh, hit classes with the extra high-intensity 
high intensive interval training class, exercise class, is the 13th and the 27th from 9 to 10 in the gym. It's $5. Yeah. Uh, where else am I at here? I forgot this. Uh, the 7th, 9 o'clock in the morning. Yes, you could be there. <laughs> Old school, school person. You should be able to do that. Um, April 7th, I forgot, was Artful Aging. That's from 1 to, th one to 3. 14th, I'm sorry, 14th, 1 to 3. And that is a free class for anyone 55 and over. Please sign up at, in the office. Just call them, whatever, we'll get you on there. Um, after that, we're taking a little break. Uh, yoga will be starting up in May. We're not sure of the exact date yet. It's maybe about the middle of May. It'll be an outdoor class. Uh, it's five dollars a day. I'm not sure if it's five or ten dollars yet. We've got to figure that out with the instructor. Uh, there were some questions on that, but that's coming up. Uh, we have uh, the flea market coming up on June the second. It's from nine to three on Sunday, June the second. Uh, vendor setup starts at eight o'clock. It's twenty dollars a table for a vendor to set up. Really cheap, guys. Really cheap. You want to get rid of some of that stuff in your house? Come up and get a table for twenty dollars and sell some stuff. Uh, concerts in the park start on June 16th, or June 15th. Uh, the band's not picked yet. We're working on that still, but that'll be going on. That'll be at Eaton Park. Uh, family day planning, as we said, has already started. Uh, lots of things going on with that. Um, we're looking for our next meeting on April the 25th at 6 o'clock. Come and join us. We need, we need lots and lots and lots of volunteers for family day. I don't know how many of you all come to family day but we need probably in the neighborhood of 50 to 60 volunteers to take care of 800 or 1,800 residents. A lot of work. So please come out. Um, so that's, where, that's what takes us up into June. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, the only other thing is for Mr. Catania who left. <laughs> I think it was on purpose. He had. <laughs> okay, he knows, sorry, he and I had talked about it. Uh, at Eaton Park, uh, we're asking that we go into the Popeye's uh, escrow account and work on that. All seven of the arborvitae trees are dead already. They were just put in in October. Mm -hmm. They're all dead. They need to be replaced. The rhododendrons that were there to block the back of the um, trash receptor, the trash <coughs> area are dying or dead. Uh, so that needs to be replaced. The other thing with the arborvitae is they're placed too far apart. They're, right now they're about 10 to 12 feet apart and they should be about four to five feet apart. So right now we look at we have this little wall, this little soldier standing up there instead of a wall of arborvitae. So those are a couple of things we need to do and work on. Get the information. And that should be it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thomas. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, John. Anybody else public? Public discussion. I want to. I just have to write a long name. <laughs> <coughs> yes, sir. Hello, my name is Jim Kelso. 3712 Mount Vernon Avenue. I've been a resident of Brookhaven for 30 years. And in the 30 years, I never saw as much of a circus that I see now. I came here at night just to listen and observe. Um, isn't it ridiculous that the chief of police had to come up here and defend that there's a hit list? This is ridiculous. Uh, Councilwoman Sawicki, you said you wanted Brookhaven to be on the map. Well, Terry Heller did that when he ran to the social media. That's a disgrace. Put a stain on our town. Cast shadows of doubt of the integrity of the police officers. Uh, I met with Chief Vice. Uh, he's, he's doing a lot in this community, getting out, engaging with the people, trying to develop that trust. And all the good work that Terry did. That's no avoid. He destroyed all the work that this chief did. And I asked that the council, you guys do the job we elected you to do, and have him resign immediately or have him step down. Thank you. Jim Henry, that you were pretty much following him. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of accusations. Had that been thrown out about you, how would you guys feel? How do you think the police department feels about that? I would like them to be able to address a lot of the accusations that were thrown their way, as it is damaging, and it does increase the risk of their jobs. Also, I'd like to personally ask you, 
Am I on some type of hit list? There is no hit list that exists for anyone. Not and I'm not the only us. one that this has come across either. That's pretty much it. If you could address the accusations. Some of what I'm going to say, some of you may have already heard, but I'm going to say it again and again and again until the message is heard. I support these officers and everything they do every day. Their job is difficult enough, but now we have the president of council that is calling for individuals to challenge their arrests and stating that he has no faith in this police department. Again, I will say it. <clears throat> These are some of the hardest working officers I have ever worked with in 28 years in law enforcement. The statements and allegations made by Mr. Heller on social media, as well as multiple news outlets, are untrue. They are baseless and they are lies. These statements can never be undone. His statements will have long lasting effects. And yes, the very safety of our officers is a very serious concern to me. To address some of these untrue statements, Mr. Heller, Mr. Heller stated, quote, I am 100% certain that it will come back well under the legal limit, end quote. This is not true. He stated the entire event was orchestrated by someone above the officer. Again, untrue. Mr. Heller stated, and I quote, there is no shortage of DUIs being thrown out after charges, end quote. And he claims this is evidenced by public record. First, there is no searchable public database to simply search DUIs. You would need specific information to search the public docket sheets. And his claims about our DUI enforcement, that is a lie. Since 2023, our department has had 169 DUI arrests, and 162 of them have been held for trial. Simple math will tell you that that is 97.63% held for trial. Again, a lot. I already spoke about the quota, the hit list, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't exist. Regarding police spending, We've, we have not disagreed on spending. All of council and I have met at many different times mm -hmm. to discuss equipment, etc. And it has always been a productive engagement. I would also remind everyone that council approves spending. I cannot just go out and spend any money that I wish. I am accountable and I am fiscally responsible. And I am very confident that Councilwoman Sawicki can attest to this. I do. And as if something wasn't learned from all of this, the posts on social media continue. What no one knows is that I had a phone conversation with Mr. Heller the Saturday morning after the incident. He claimed to me that there was another entity that was behind this, and I will leave that unnamed. Well, is it them or is it me? Well, right, it's neither. All of this, everything that, that has happened comes down to personal responsibility. If personal responsibility was taken in this incident and he didn't run to spread the lies on social media outlets, we likely wouldn't be here now talking about this. They are the facts that I have. And yes, I would agree that Mr. Heller has done a lot of great things and important things for this borough. But what about what has happened since March 8th? Do we just forget about it? I'm supposed to just tell these guys to go out? Just go out, guys. Do your job. You don't have support of some of the people on council. But that, that's okay. Remember, he has no faith in this police department. That's what he said. He's continuing to post on social media. And just today, I received two right to know requests from Mr. Howard. But we're moving forward. Right. Again, council is correct when they spoke about all of the accomplishments we have all been a part of to include our accreditation status. But the serious issue and what needs to be addressed is what has happened since March 8th. 
we now have a department that is clearly aware that the very person who sits in charge of counsel, the head of counsel, has no faith in our police. This cannot be undone. This is not going away, and it's, it needs to be dealt with if this department is ever going to try to move forward. The longer it goes unaddressed, the worse it gets, in my opinion. Again, I will end by saying I am angry, I am frustrated, and most of all, I am disappointed. This borough and our police department deserves better. My name is Ginny McKee. I'm from Mount Vernon Avenue here. I just want to let you know I've been an investigator for 35 years. What I see, I, I'm not thrilled Terry put that out. But what I have seen since then, I have issues. Some with the police department. Some with the community. There is a Facebook page, Brookhaven, P, Brookhaven PD. Who's in charge of that Brookhaven uh, Facebook page? Is it Borough Run? because it does post things about what's going on in the borough, about the letter um, that Chief Vice put out, which everyone had the right to see, about the findings of what they found out what happened with Terry. Then also with the, um, the bus that they find, the, the guy that was just caught stealing, whatever, they posted. But when I have an issue with that Facebook page, one, if it is a borough run, we need to stop putting on these comments. These comments that are we are allowing on that Facebook page, a borough run, if it is, I don't know, I'm asking. Is it a borough run Facebook page? Who's in charge of it? The police department. The police department. And you're paid by the borough, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I paid by yeah. the borough? Yeah. Well, obviously, yes. I just have a question is, I think that needs a better control of preventing these lies misconceptions, some of it's truthful. I got it, I've, I've looked at it. We have more people out of the borough making comments on this website, on that Facebook page than ever before. People I don't even know, we got fake accounts on it. But I just think that for, for, the, for the safety of our borough and for the integrity of our borough, that that Facebook page should just be post of, hey, this is what happened. Hey, our officers caught this thief. This is what we did. It shouldn't have to be comments. You should be able to post a something, this is what happened in it. If they're gonna want someone wants to put something, put a happy face, put a mad face, something like that. But when it gets carried away, and then police officers or other people or relatives or girlfriends, whatever, keep adding to that post, that's what continues this anger, this confusion. I am walking the dog the other day. I have some man come out of a house, ask me what's going on, because he sees me volunteer enough. And I was like, oh, I don't know, I'm not happy with both of them. I'm all for the police. Been in it for 35 years. I'm, I, Terry's done good with us. I don't know what it is. I don't think you, I know you two have conflicts, I guess. Go deal with it. Get it over with. This borough needs to move on. Last week, everyone got up and started to say, Oh, we support the police today. Absolutely, we support the police. But it went into a direction of, you know, the, the hating Terry or, or hating what was said. I don't like what was said, trust me. I, I don't like it. Shot from the hip, I don't like it. Should have never done it. Should have done behind doors, should have happened that way. So, and I, your guys are great. You've brought them up to standards. You've given them the confidence. You've gotten the certificates. You've done well by them. But the drama, needs to stop. <clears throat> that is everybody in this community. It needs to end, it needs to move on. So either you do something behind closed doors and have a good discussion and get it over with and allow this community to go on again. I agree, maybe apology would be good. I, that may, but in due time, maybe that will happen. I have no idea. But the bottom line is we have got to stop this. That Facebook page is the death of us. I have read some comments that I'm like, are you crazy? It's crazy. And I truly also think that I don't care if you're a member of this borough, if you get paid by the borough, you, you have got to watch what you put on Facebook. Not just you. 
your girlfriend, your fiance, your brother, your, you, everyone has to be conscious of what they put out there. That goes for council president too? Mm -hmm. that goes, yes, 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 okay. I'm making a blanket. It's for everybody. Because that's what's gonna keep us healthy. We're not healthy now. So we gotta start all over again. So, but it, that post, Facebook page needs to, needs to get control. Because I, that's what the gentleman came out the other day talking about. I was like, I, I, in fact, that kind of, I just wondered about it. So of course, I went stalking. And then I was disgusted. And I was disgusted about it, just certain people that tend to be on that and nonstop. And majority of them aren't even borough residents. It just needs to end. Let's all think about doing something and that it ends. Okay? Thanks. Bye. Do I have to write my name again? No. No. All right. Connie Baxter and I, 40 years ago, standing in the old Brookhaven School, challenged when you were, I don't know, same age as we were, I guess, mm -hmm. probably in our 30s, late 30s, 40s, challenged the borough council because they were challenging the police. Happened to be Chief Eller. We were merely PTL moms at the time. <laughs> and we raised a lot of hell. And the kids raised a lot of hell. Now, 40 years later, fast forward, again, that was Armin DiCarlo, I believe, back in the day. Right? I think so. 40 years later, we have President of Council and the Chief of Police batting heads again. Well, I can say back then they were going after the Chief because Chief Eller was above and beyond. Mm -hmm. I, sir, do not know you from Adam. I truly don't. You've never met me, that's fine. But it took a while, but at least our police chief knew at the time that he had the, had, because we literally took to the streets, we marched mm -hmm. through the streets with signs, with us and the kids. Obviously Chief Eller stayed, Armin DiCarlo did not. So, you, sir, are an employee, okay? You, if you're a value to this borough, we can't vote you out. We cannot vote you out. We can vote them out if we don't like what they're doing. If we don't like what Mr. Heller's doing, we can, we can take action against that. You, like Chief Eller, remained a stalwart in our community. He represented us. He made it his everyday plan to make sure the kids knew who he was and what he was about. He made sure that Mr. Pappas was in Coburn Elementary School. Everybody knew Mr. Pa you know, Officer Pappas. I have pictures on a card of Mr. Pappas. He didn't look like that. <laughs> he looked more like that. But that was, that was what the chief did, because they couldn't fire him unless we let them. OK? However, this changes all the time. So I would beg you, if what you're saying is true, and I have no idea if it's true or not, um, I do know some police in, the, in, the, in my neighborhood, and they're wonderful. So by, by association, I'm going to put you there, just because. If he likes you, yep, I guess you're OK, because I honestly can't speak to it. These people, we can make changes. So I would ask you to please do what you can 
to heal from your perspective what you can do for our borough because you are our employee. We put faith in the, the people at the time to hire the best that they could afford at the time. And I'm assuming as a 45 year resident that you're probably the best we're gonna, you know, that we, that we got the best. We always have. I beg you to please stop the nonsense. You were around when that all happened. You yeah, remember. I, I remember that. vividly. You do, yep. you do. And it was ripping the dis our borough apart. Yes, it did. We don't want, you know, history does not have to repeat itself. That's true. Okay? If we don't want Mr. Heller, we will vote him out. I promise you. Armin DeCarlo is gone. Mr. Heller, if the, if the borough residents decide we don't want him to represent us anymore, he will be gone. So please, do what you do in your bailiwick to keep us safe. Continue to do what you're doing. You guys, please do not take sides. It's way too easy. I saw it before. It was Janice and I don't know, a couple others, and you know, some Republicans and you know. And it was until we forced them at the time to make the right decision. But four years ago, I tried to get up on this board. I lost. Oh well. But I was willing to serve because I wanted to be open, I wanted to be transparent, and I wanted to do probably what most of these people want to do. So please, stop with the Facebook. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happened to me when I was running is I introduced myself on Facebook. The people that were running against me wrote a bunch of stuff on Facebook. And because I don't do Facebook every day, I didn't see it. So I didn't answer it. So then they wrote back again that because I didn't answer it, that must be that I admitted what I did or what they assumed that I did or what I said. I didn't even see it. So please, stop with the Facebook. It's getting none of us. You say that Mr. Heller puts a, a, you know, a shadow on us? No, we put a shadow on us. No. He did right, wrong, that's your opinion. But to, to consistently go back to Facebook and just stir the pot. That's not something I can control. That's not something you can control. What you can control is the police department. And if you do your job, trust me, you will be here next year. And the year after that, and the year after that. If he doesn't do his job, he will not. But that's our job. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Yes, Bob Hudson, 701 Lincoln. I'd like to uh, say uh, I've been here over 40 years I've been a resident. I'm a retired life member of the fire company. A lot of you know me from that. Back in the day, when we had something like this, some type of disagreement or a different of views, we used to say, let's take them both and put them in a room, lock the door, right, and let them work it out amongst themselves. We can't, I had to agree with the two young ladies, we can't continue. He said, she said, I said, he said, and then little digs go in there that probably were meant, but probably weren't really meant to be seen by everybody. In the one letter Chief Weiss put out about what happened, he said uh, Mr. Heller was slightly under the limit, okay? Slightly under the limit. How many times are you slightly over the limit that's right. and you're handcuffed and taken away? You know, that's uncalled for. It should have said you're under the limit or you're over the limit. 
That, you know, we don't need to get into this little, little thing. That's what continues to pour gasoline on this fire. It continues to do that. And until those two get in a room together and discuss it, mm -hmm. if they want to bring their attorneys, bring your attorneys, bring whoever you want to bring, okay? In a room together, close the door, and at the end of the day, I'll bet you, I mean, these are two grown adults. Chief Weiss has done a hell of a lot for the police department. Not too long ago, our, 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 um, it saddens me to say, but our police department was a wreck. Okay, had no leadership. You know, we had temporary chiefs, mm -hmm. and then we had no chiefs, and, and it was a mess. He's brought a lot to the police department. <laughs> Terry Heller has brought a heck of a lot to the community with all the things that he's done, ideas that he's brought forward. You know what, it's not just him, mm -hmm. it's leadership. And it's the whole council that contributes to that, just like the police. It's not just Chief Vice, it's the whole police department that puts their lives on the line every day to protect us. It's not, it's, but one person has to lead it. And if you don't have good leadership, this is what happens. But we have to get together. I suggest you know, somebody take the bull by the horn, put them in a room, and let's, let's bring this to rest. This is splitting the community apart almost as bad as the government's doing right now. You know, with Republicans and Democrats battling head, heads, and he said, she said, I did this, he did that, and we have a mess on our hands. It's the same thing happening in this borough. This borough's a nice place. Since Wonderful over 40 place. years I've been here. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. Okay, so that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> My name is Ryan Eastman. I live in the uh, 3400 block of Victor Avenue. Uh, just bear with me. I had some things to say, but I've done some audibles with people talking. Um, so I'm sorry if I end up repeating myself, myself from the workshop meeting. But I'll be here. I'll stand up at this podium until our department gets at least an answer of what is being done, done about the council president's comments on social media that are still continuing. At one point, no one can dispute the good that Mr. Heller has done, but now what are we going to do about the irreparable damage between the police department and borough council and this community? If I went into my promotional interview to become sergeant and said nothing but, I want to make this department better, I'll tell you right now, I would not have been promoted. We need to know what is being done to show your support to us. Actions speak louder than words. We still have heard nothing from the president of council or two council members that stood up there tonight. If anyone believes that we are being dramatic about this, I personally invite you on a ride along with myself and gladly partake in it. I work days and nights for those that uh, can't do both. I'm here to speak as a resident of our borough. Our police department has undergone significant change and growth in the last few years since Chief Vice. Many didn't believe our accomplishments would be possible, but here we are. I want all of you to know that I'm proud to be part of the great things we are doing in our police department, and you all should be too. I have been a member of this police department since 2018. That is six years ago. Chief Vice is now my fifth chief in six years. This attack on our police department needs to stop. It is all because, all because of one person. The statements he has made against our police department are unacceptable, and I do not see how it can remain on council with those statements and opinions. You don't know the challenges we face every single day that the uniform goes on, and to make those statements from a position of power makes our job that much more difficult. The solution is simple. An apology is not enough. An apology will not take away the news articles, the Facebook comments, the Facebook posts. Councilman Heller needs to resign from council. Anybody else? Hearing nobody else, I we do. Um, yeah. Good evening. Excuse me. Good evening. I'm John Pasilio, 4926 Grant Drive. I've been a resident here myself for the last seven years. I've uh, 
I've seen a lot of changes go here. I've seen the, the, our police department not have the support that it needs. We've not had uh, proper uh, leadership in our police department. We've also had, you know, changes of our board. They pushed to have our police department be better. Uh, Terry was one of them. He is a big proponent of that. Also, I, I, this lady brought up the poor Cleveland Police Department page. Now, what I saw on this page, you know, a lot of people here in this community and outside this community have had their, given their opinions on Facebook. A lot of them, some good, a lot bad. But one thing I will say, as Brook Cayman Police Department, I don't care, you know, I respect the police, I support law enforcement 100%. However, I did see a lot of personal digs from the Brook Cayman Police Department. Now, who here on this council or the police department can tell me who manages it? Anyone? There can't be nobody here. And if council doesn't know, that's unacceptable. Okay, because council obviously here doesn't know what they're doing. As far as who manages what, as far as the, the Facebook page, the official Facebook pages. You know, I think that people here, if it's a Brookhaven Police Department page or at Brookhaven, it should be an official. Okay, everyone's getting their little digs here on the council is unacceptable because you're all taking sides no matter, Mrs. Heller, I know that's your husband and I respect him, but there should be no personal opinions on this council. That should be kept to yourselves. You guys represent all of us, okay? That's unacceptable. All these digs, unacceptable. Police department, unacceptable for giving digs out. You guys need to either get together, talk to, with your lawyers, work this out. You know, I support the police, I support fire and everyone. But the, the lack of professionalism from council and everyone here is insane. Please do better to talk amongst yourselves. And yes, Terry did go to the public. I'm not condoning all that either, okay? I respect, you know, I was there that night it, when we were there at Chili's. I personally, <coughs> I'm not taking his side. Did he have two drinks? Yes. But I will say this. No, he had two drinks only, and I was a witness to that. I will say that the police department, personally, I think you guys need to work together just like you did before when, when they brought you in, Chief Vice. I respect you and all your, you know, your statements, but I think you need to be less personal about it, okay? And, and the reports that you gave, fine, they're great. But keep, please just keep it to the facts and not personal opinions, that's all I ask. I'm not trying to be disrespectful here. I think the police department does a great job here, better than any community I've ever seen, okay? My wife brought me here to this community because it's a great place, and she was damn right. This council, I do respect you all, but I think it's time we need to work together again, whether, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, but please keep your personal opinions to yourselves in council, Close doors, and let's work together to get this issue resolved. And I hope that I don't have any further issues with anyone in public after this, because everyone's probably going to be looking for me on Facebook now. <laughs> um, but seriously, I think we got a great thing here. I hope we can all work together. And if I offend anyone, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we will um, entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. We have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming.